Hey, what's up everybody? Primus Prime 22 here bring you another Transformers lore. This time we're going to be looking into the world of Beast Wars Uprising, also known as the most depressing universe in the world, I mean Jesus Christ. I'm sure you all know how these things begin. The Autobots and Decepticons went to war on Cybertron as always. The war then spread out to other planets and the intergalactic community came to call the Cybertronians as the scourge of the cosmos. Due to the countless worlds destroyed in the universe, Cybertronians became a greatly hated species. Eventually, the fighting once more only concentrated around Cybertron, and the Autobots and Decepticons were low on fuel. Thus, the decision was made that no longer would the Autobots and Decepticons fight the war. They would create more fuel-efficient successors, the Maximals and the Predacons. These two factions would fight in arenas instead of making the entire planet a war zone. The Autobots and Decepticons manipulated the Energon Reserves so that the Maximals and Predacons would always remain a starved lower class. The Decepticons forced the Predacons into service. However, the Autobots would not stoop to such barbarism. The Autobots believed that freedom was the right of all sentient beings, so they gave the Maximals a choice to either fight in the arena or die on the streets without Energon. Propaganda slogans were fed into the minds of many Maximal warriors. Better dead than a Pred. Once a Predacon, always a Predacon. The Autobots and Decepticons ultimately became known as the Builders. The Maximals sought to create an ultimate warrior and created Protoform X. No matter how much pain they inflicted on him, Protoform X would always grow back and heal his wounds. This was because he had a special ability granted to him by his special spark, a .1 percenter. A rare spark that allowed for powerful abilities. However, the decision was made that Protoform X was too dangerous to live, and a plan was made to send him off into space. The young Maximal named Transmutate, also a .1 percenter, with an uncontrollable power, studied history given to her by the Autobots and Maximal High Command. She came to realize that there were inconsistencies in the history that the Autobots did not want her to know about. She met Cryrotech and his gang of Predacons. Cryotech manipulated Transmutate into helping his unit on a mission, and then left her behind. Before Transmutate was captured by the authorities, she was rescued by Botanica and her gang of Maximal Resistance fighters. There was a Maximal unit under the command of Optimus Primal. He led his troops against the Predacon group called the Darksiders in his first arena battle. Silverbolt and Rhinox were eventually killed, and Rattrap was lost and separated from the group after an explosion took place. Cheetor finally lost it, and he, Black Arachnia, and Night Scream proceeded to kill Optimus Primal, and even had a group of Predacons join in. Rattrap managed to escape, but he learned that there was no glory, no honor in continuing to live this way. However, he knew someone who had plenty of honor. Dinobot, who had been captured and thrown into Pharomax Detention Center. Rattrap originally went out to get Dinobot himself, but he came under attack on the road to Damaxis. However, he survived, but realized he needed help. So, Rattrap contacted Botanica's resistance unit. Rattrap met with Botanica's forces at Pharomax. Rattrap lent them a shield created by Rhinox to help them get into the facility at Pharamax. The mission had a second objective, to get a message out to the general public that would incriminate the builders. The unit arrived at the maximum security level, where a nearby prisoner sees Transmutate. It's Protoform X, and he notes that her spark is not like the others. He feels as if he feeds off her torment, but he knows that she has too much pain in her spark. She has enough to blanket the world and let everyone share it. He tells her to share it, and let the world scream in a joyous cacophony. However, the unit moves forward and Transmutate goes with them. However, their mission fails, and Transmutate is captured. She is brought before a trial led by Lyo Jr., and she is sentenced to leave Cybertron and to be imprisoned in the Cybertronian penal colony, Garrus-16. Meanwhile, Protoform X is also to be sent away from Cybertron to go to Garrus-16 as well. The prisoners in Protoform X are all put onto a ship called the Kalstrom, which is sent out. However, a blast of energy comes from a nearby dwarf planet called LGC-8803 and destroys their ship. The only survivors are Protoform X and Transmutate. Protoform X falls through the sky and lands in shambles. However, because of his state of immortality, he begins to regenerate. He sees a small figure from the side of his eyes, and he opens fire. He continues to be stalked on the planet by an unknown figure. Meanwhile, Transmutate has landed on the planet with her stasis pod. She remarks that this is wrong, when her Navicomp says that she's right, this is wrong. They should be at Gear 16 by now. The Navicomp advises her to return to her stasis pod and reinitialize stasis and await reclamation by maximal security. It calculates the wait time as being indefinite. Transmutate says that she will not be doing that, and that the pod seems to be broken in the first place. The Navicomp then advises her to get inside the pod and self-induce stasis by manually slamming her head in the door. Two to three times should be sufficient. 
Transmutate tells the computer that she won't be doing that either. She takes the computer off the pod to continue talking to it, but the computer says that is illegal. Transmutate adds that the stasis generators are unstable and very likely to explode very soon. The computer recalculates and decides to let Transmutate remove it and to leave the stasis pod. As they drive on the planet, Transmutate continues to ask the computer questions, but it does not provide any real answers. She says that she salvaged the computer for her assistance. The computer helpfully says that 370 ketons of force on her brow should induce stasis and allow for an uneventful wait for extraction. It points out that nearby rocks have sufficient density to deliver the blow. Transmutate responds by saying that that is not actually helpful to her. The computer responds that she is a prisoner, and the unit is designed for operation of a stasis pod intended for incarceration in exile. It was specifically designed to not be user-friendly. Transmutate observes the signs of civilization and deduces that they are not alone on the planet. The computer says that perhaps they can help in rendering her unconscious. Transmutate sees a large figure on the horizon, but the computer does not read it. It says that she seems to be experiencing pareidolia, a form of false input common to sapiens. The suggested treatment is 370 ketons of blunt force to the brow. Suddenly, Protoform X arrives. The two fight for a while until they recognize each other from the prison. Transmutate asks who he is. He replies, saying that he is the Maximal's grandest mistake, their hubris made horror. He is... But before he can finish, he falls to the ground. Transmutate finishes by saying that he is power-starved. The two try to help each other. When suddenly, Bruton and Medusa appear and beat down the two Cybertronians. The two fall to the ground with their heads being crushed. As the crush can be heard, the Navicomp states that that sounded approximately like 370 ketons of force. Sufficient. Protoform X and Transmutate wake up and see Lord Imperius Delirius, leader of the Destructons. Delirius expresses his regret that the Cybertronians were treated horribly by his troops. He sees to their restoration. He asks what they eat. Protoform X replies by saying, Torment, but Transmutate corrects him and says that they eat Energon. After eating in the halls of Delirius' headquarters, Delirius asks if their hunger has been sated. Protoform X replies that his hunger can never be sated, when Transmutate once again corrects him and tells Delirius that he has consumed sufficient energon to achieve optimum performance. Imperius Delirius explains that he goes around liberating oppressed species. He talks about his origin, as well as the origin of his troops. Imperius was originally an artificial intelligence that served as the repository for the recorded neurological engrams of an entire species. These minds amalgamated, and Imperius Delirius was born. Bruton was created by the Lunatrix and made to do manual labor. Medusa was made by the Intruder Empire for entertainment of the rich, and Psychocon was made for the gladiator pits by the Symbians. Delirius found them all and upgraded them and repaired them. He seeks to recruit Transmutate and Protoform X into his army. He even gives Protoform X a new name, Rampage. Rampage and Transmutate debate over staying or not. Rampage feels at home here, but Transmutate doesn't trust Imperius Delirius. She trusted someone like him before, Cryotech, and it didn't go well. Rampage says that they can be with their own kind, outcast, freaks, the broken. Transmutate stands up and firmly states that she is not broken. Transmutate points out that the facts do not line up and that it is impossible for Delirius to not know of their existence. He shot at the claustrum, knowing that it would be likely that only Rampage would survive so he could recruit him. Delirious, having been found out, claps at this revelation. However, he pointed out an incorrect assumption. Destroying the claustrum was an unintended part of his plan, as he wanted to salvage Cybertronian technology to wage war on Cybertron itself. Rampage and Transmutate get ready to fight the Destructons, but Imperius Delirious continues to try to persuade them. He says that they can't leave, they are lost, they are broken, they need him, they belong with him, they belong to him. Transmutate corrects him. He's wrong, because they are not broken. So, Delirious opens up his face and decides to break them through his weapon called the Delirious Fire. The Delirious Fire is a mental psychological weapon that causes its victims to live their greatest fears within their own minds. Within Rampage, he undergoes torment after torment from his creation. The scientists ask him to tell them on a scale of 1 to 10, how much does this death hurt compared to the others? After dying, Rampage ends up on a chair, where a small Delirious speaks to him. The dream is still going on, this is just a resting point. He'll get his bearings, and just be able to find peace, maybe even a few friends. Then, in a few minutes, or hours, or days, or years, he'll turn around and suddenly his friends will strap him back onto the table and begin to rip him apart again and again. Rampage struggles against Delirious. He demands to know where Transmutate is, and he demands Delirious release her. Delirious refuses, and wonders what horrors Transmutate is going through. In contrast to Rampage's violent and fiery realm, 
Transmutate is alone and breaking into pieces. She can hardly form a coherent thought. The vague shape of hands reach out to get her, and she runs only to find one shard of glass with a flaming creature in it. It's Rampage. They both see each other and just say, You. The dreams flip as they make contact. Transmutate is in a fiery netherworld while Rampage is breaking apart. Rampage urges her that the only way to save either of them is for her to use her powers that she has never been able to use before. Transmutate refuses, no, not ever again. Rampage responds that she fears her own power, fears it being abused. He knows that they are kindred, he and her. They have so much to learn from each other, and he can teach her to channel her strength, and she, she can teach him clarity. The nightmarish world collapses around them, and they are free. Rampage puts a hand on her shoulder, and she looks up at him. Suddenly, a huge flash of energy shatters Delirious' palace, sending him flying. Transmutate is finally doing it. She's controlling her powers. Delirious orders the Destructons to kill the Cybertronians, and Rampage and Transmutate fight, killing Bruton and Medusa. Delirious calls them fools and that he has already sent a distress signal to Cybertron, unencrypted. Now the whole galaxy knows that there are two Cybertronians on the planet. Let's see who comes for them first. Cybertron? Or any one of the infinite enemies to Cybertron? Rampage and Transmutate wait on the planet while Delirious flees, and he begins to access something. The Navicomp from Transmutate's stasis pod. Cybertronian technology. After a couple of tries, Delirious has hacked into it. Now, he can reformat himself and the bodies of Bruton and Medusa into something much, much more powerful. <laughs>